Hello and welcome to ZDM Zero Defect Manufacturing Standardization Focus Group webinar. My name is Mark Duarte. Here with me is also Hugo Faria. We are both project managers in Innova's international department at H2020 unit. This initiative is coordinated by Innova, part of the ongoing project Z Factor, where Innova is responsible for the standardization activities. Just a brief note about Innova. Innova is a Portuguese SME specialized in supporting the growth of organizations through innovation. Innovation is our biggest flag, offering a differentiative service in international cooperation, digital transformation, and access to funding. Innova is leading company in the field of promotion and management of international projects on innovation and research and technological development. So for this webinar, the agenda will be the, the following. We will start uh, for the introduction of the projects which are part of the ZDM focus group. Then we'll go to the, to the, to the, to the sorry, um, before, before the introduction of the projects, uh, we'll also uh, uh, talk briefly about this initiative, uh, the ZDM. And uh, then we will follow then the, 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 the individual presentation of the project. We will, um, we will present the radar chart and pay charts related to the standardization on the, on the projects, following to the ZTM standardization needs and advantages, and then closing with the wrap up and uh, ending notes. As a Z Factor initiative, this standardization focus group is a key element for engaging stakeholders and promote discussion and evaluation on the importance of standardization. Within this task, we aim to access standardization opportunities and sharing knowledge and best practices that foster the uptake of technologies. The ZTM standardization focus group will support the Z Factor's task on supporting new regulations and standards to accelerate adoption of the new manufacturing systems and hence bring, bring value back to the EU. The methodology for this uh, ZDM standardization mapping is, is presented here. Um, we will capturing the needs uh, from the project industrial use cases and also target to market to exploit the project results and which we are aiming to maximize the benefits which will can uh, come up in different uh, outcomes as achieving safety and efficiency, avoid inconsistency, and also get predictable results. These standards analysis and evaluations um, will be done uh, together in this uh, ZTM sensation focus group, counting with uh, the projects uh, Z-Factor, Stream 0D, Zero, Goodman, and Coroma. Um, this will be um, analyzing and uh, collaborating uh, together and in order to achieve a common standardization action plan. Also a note here for the industrial workshop that will be held in, the, um, in Bergamo, Italy on the 10th of October 2019. Uh, where we present some, some results uh, for this ongoing project and also um, the contributions uh, that we are collecting for this CTM sensation focus group. We will now move to the presentations of the projects involved in this focus group. Uh, and we will start by Zero uh, Z Factor uh, project. Z Factor is a project under H2020 program, the biggest EU research and innovation program. Z Factor has a total of 13 EU based partners representing both industry and academia, having ample exam experience in cutting edge technologies and active presence in the EU manufacturing. 
The aim of the Z-Factor project is to achieve high precision manufacturing of complex products, increasing the accuracy of machines, improving quality control, and also minimizing defects while minimizing energy consumption and carbon footprinting in production. There are two main objectives, the industrial objectives and the technical objectives. The first one is the expectation to support the growth of the European industrial companies. And the second one, allow the implementation of, of opportune zero defect manufacturing strategies within the industrial plants. The z pro project uh, presents five different strategies. Um, the z the z detect um, will correspond to the early detection of the defects. The z predicts the prediction of the defect generation. The z prevents the prevention of defect generation in recalibrating the production line. And z repair it products reworking whenever possible with additive subtractive manufacturing techniques. This uh, will be managed uh, on the higher strategy called Z management. The Z Factor project has three uh, use cases within. Um, and these three use cases actually cover quite different uh, industry sectors. We have one use case dedicated to uh, microchips manufacturing, where uh, defects are uh, related to very high precision uh, deposition and, and, uh, and manufacturing techniques, uh, which uh, rely in a, in a quite uh, complex uh, set of standards and, uh, and procedures within the, the industry itself. On the other hand, we have um, the, um, the hard metal use case uh, where we have a single parts production, meaning that we don't have um, mass production of, uh, of big uh, quantities of, of parts, which makes the analysis and the automation or even the sensing of this uh, production line quite complex in a sense that uh, all parts are different and uh, in very limited numbers to be manufactured. And so we are talking about unique parts. Uh, in this case, visual inspection is uh, the main standard. Uh, and of course, we want to improve this uh, by automating some of the sensing and the conditioning monitoring of the parts and even the production line itself. Um, on the other hand, we have this third uh, use case uh, that is uh, related with uh, cutting tools or special cutting tools uh, in which we have a uh, standard uh, machining and uh, subtractive uh, techniques for the metal industry uh, but the the parts design is quite complex and then uh, the challenge remains here on how to do the inspection methods to be reliable in such uh, complex shape products uh, where the details or, or the shape are exactly the, the core of the, um, of the problems that might arise. Um, so in these three use cases, we have quite a different range of uh, kind of, of problems and as well as uh, types of products. And the idea is exactly that Z factor uh, works as a, um, a, a platform that will work on top of each of these use cases in a very similar way uh, at a higher level. So now from, from Goodman, we will have a presentation from Cristina Cristaldi um, from Locione, and um, we will give her the floor. So Cristina, please. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, yes, I'm Cristina Cristalli and I'm, I am the coordinator of the Goodman project. The Goodman project is one of the projects participating in the four ZDM cluster. It started in October 2016 and it will end next week. The main idea and the main objective of the Goodman project is to integrate and combine the process and the quality control in a multi-stage production. 
uh, using uh, a distributed system architecture that is based uh, on a multi-agent system that we call the agent-based uh, uh, cyber physical system and smart inspection tools. Uh, moreover, the Goodman supports the real-time data collection and uh, the defect diagnosis, both at the single level, so at the level of the extension of the single quality control uh, systems, and also at the level, at the higher level, the global level. So that means that we are sharing and processing information coming from the complete process at an higher level in order um, to detect the process deviation using data mining techniques. So the main result and the main uh, contribution of our project is this uh, uh, system and architecture that we developed and is uh, uh, rather general that can be utilized in different uh, multi-stage manufacturing the production line. As you can see, we can uh, have uh, three layers, we have three main layers. The, on, the, on the bottom, the bottom one is a multi-stage production and quality controls. We are at uh, um, shop floor layer where the, the different quality control station and the different uh, smart inspection tools have been developed and, and integrated. Um, in, this, uh, in this layer the, the data are coming from the single device and are going up to the higher level that is the multi-agent system. The multi-agent system is the middle layer is responsible to share data from the shop floor to the higher level. In the higher level, we have the global approach based on a ZDM data analytics and knowledge management. In this, uh, in this layer, we have the concentrated all the data mining and data analytics in order to provide feedbacks down to the, uh, the shop floor level. In order to uh, perform and to deploy and to develop the components of, this of the Goodman architecture, uh, we have uh, in the consortium nine partners. We have the university, a research center, who define uh, and worked, for example, on the smart inspection tool, the University Polytechnic of Ancona, and to the middle layer, the mass, the IPB, the Institute of Braganza, and the Uninova on the root servers. And then we have also three um, technical providers uh, in terms of Locioni as integrators uh, in order to implement and to integrate the different components in the real production lines. Then we have Nisatec and BOC. They are two small medium enterprise focused on the uh, data analytics and knowledge management. The, these architectures have been, uh, as I said, and developed in the first part of the project and have been uh, integrated and deployed in three real production lines of the, our three end user. In particular, Volkswagen Auto Europa in Lisbon, Electrolux Professional in Pordenoni, and Zannini uh, in Poland, uh, who is a, a company that makes batch production mechanical components. So let, uh, the results uh, the, the, of, this, uh, um, of this deployment uh, have impacted positively the, the production lines and the objective of the project have been reached. Okay, thank you, Christina. So now we have uh, the presentation of the Stream Zero D project uh, by Jose. We had this uh, video prepared, and uh, therefore, uh, this is um, the general presentation of the project. The main objective of this project of Stream Zero D is to develop novel methods for manufacturing with uh, zero defects. There is a technology called a model order reduction, which is a game-changing technology because it allows us to transform these computational, computationally complex but slow models into uh, simple functions that can run in real time and that can be used in the simplest platforms such as uh, tablets, PCs or even mobile phones.
This uh, model order reduction allows us to get real digital twins of the production world, which can be integrated in the production line. Uh, they can run at the same time as the, as the production line. They can be fed with uh, data from the, from the production line, therefore connecting the, uh, the physical world with the, with the digital world. And then they can predict the, the production parameters as the production uh, proceeds and take decisions in real time in order to adjust some of the process parameters to uh, eliminate defects in the final in the final products or keep the production parameters within the desired uh, limits. Uh, therefore, this is a very ambitious project, uh, and in order to carry out carry it out successfully, we have gathered a consortium of uh, ten partners with different uh, expertises. In Europe, we have um, we have recruited uh, two academic partners, uh, three technology centers, a dissemination and exploitation partner, and most importantly, uh, three industrial companies who will provide the production lines for demonstration purposes. The final implementation of uh, the string CDD solution in the project will be done at different levels. First, at the subfloor level, the use of real-time models uh, will result in making um, smarter decisions. Next, in a higher level, the model-based control in a continuous way will reduce definitely the variability of the key performance indicators, increasing in that way the robustness of the product performance. Basically, what we are doing is just uh, taking the real world, translate into models, and then with, this, with these models, we can understand what is happening there. These models uh, need to be translated again to numerical methods to be reproduced in, in simulations, and once we have all this information in, in the computers, we are able to generate real-time simulation models which are useful for getting this zero defect uh, target that we want. We have already defined and select the data gathering systems that will be needed to provide the actual values of the critical input parameters for the simulation models. We have strong contribution to the development and implementation of the adaptive data control and data-driven models. And uh, we now will be involved in the final integration and pilot implementation for the project. The cloud platform will provide secure collection, storage, and access to the large amount of data that is continuously generated in the pilot lines. Right now, we are already collecting data from the pilots and making it available for the process models and decision-making. The StreamOD partners are using the data collected from the cloud platform to develop algorithms for calibration, optimization, and adaptive control. Our main role in the StreamOD project is the definition and implementation of the control strategies for the three pilot cases. STAM is therefore the leader of the work package which aims at the development of the control and decision-making modules ready to be installed in the production lines. We also support the development of some of the online measurement station and the inline deployment of the system in the industrial lines. Currently, we are working on the development of the software platform that will allow the execution of the reduced order and data-driven models in real time. The three inducers involved in stream zero d projects are suppliers for the in automotive industry and deals with uh, three different products and production systems. CETEF produces booster units by an assembly process. Standard Profil produces car body seals through a rubber extrusion process. And FERSA Bearings produces bearings by means of a machining process. Stream Zero D is a project funded by the European Commission within the H2020 Framework Programme, which is the main instrument of the European Commission for funding research and innovation in Europe. So, um, we have also two other projects uh, that couldn't be uh, represented in this session today, although they participated actively in this uh, focus group. And uh, I will just do a short, uh, brief presentation on, on uh, these projects. Uh, the Coroma project proposes a cognitively enhanced robot that can execute multiple tasks for the manufacturing of metal and composites parts. Um, in fact, they also have uh, this standardization 
uh, activity within the project led by their partner uh, Dean, the German uh, authority for uh, normalization. And in fact, uh, they, uh, they, they did internally this kind of, of, uh, of procedure to try to understand what critical topics they, they have within their, uh, their end users uh, and use cases. And in particular, they have um, three use cases uh, ranging from energy, aerospace, and naval industries, which again is also quite a wide range of uh, applications for this kind of, um, of zero defect manufacturing approaching um, kind of projects. And um, they, they actually are also ending uh, in this uh, very month uh, in September which means uh, that they have already produced uh, quite a significant amount of um, standardization analysis uh, together with, of course, their uh, technical developments uh, that are being presented this very week uh, as well. Um, the Zaero project uh, is more focused on the aerospace uh, market and uh, they have um, uh, composites uh, Composites manufacturing as the main focus. Uh, they have uh, main players of main European players on, on these uh, sectors within within the the, the consortium, and in fact uh, they also uh, relate very much to the development of of uh, or development of the manufacturing processes regarding composites, which in fact are uh, uh, um, lacking uh, better and wider harmonization. So actually, although they don't have a specific work pack, package dedicated to standardization, they identified this as a critical issue along uh, with the project developments because they found um, uh, a few gaps uh, to be to be raised uh, in a later uh, stage of this discussion so that also the composites industry can jump to a more uh, reliable and accurate and precise and repeatable kind of procedures leading to higher quality of the manufactured parts and of course uh, reducing the number of defects uh, and scrap. So um, these two projects are quite aligned with the uh, with the other three that are directly represented by our colleagues here with, uh, and uh, we thank them also for being part of this uh, group. So we will now move forward to the third point in our agenda, which is uh, dedicated to uh, the approach itself that we took to uh, analyze and identify uh, the priorities uh, to act in, in on behalf of standardization aspects on these projects. So the, the, the effort that uh, we are putting here on standardization is not the, the initial one. Um, just before um, I would like to mention the fourth ZDM uh, focus group, which was a previous one on the ZDM projects, which were running in parallel under an older framework program. It shows that we, we as ZDM standardization focus group, are being part of these awareness initiatives in standardization. So regarding our, our strategy, we agreed to, to, to collaborate in the, in the two charts. Uh, the radar chart and the, and the pace chart. The first one, the radar chart, um, identifies the standards that are being adopted, candidates as potential standards, and the others which are being tracked for not having yet the potential or the importance enough to be adopted. The second one, the pace chart, compares the easiness of implementation with expected benefits identifying clearly the standards. So these were the steps for, for the ZEC factor. We identified the standards, we classify them, and then we will ev evaluate them. This is the, the list, the extensive list that we have for, for the ZEC factor projects. 
um, which followed um, a preliminary research, and then it was um, it was uh, it was built uh, with the, with the project partners uh, to find an an ending list of the standards, which are the most uh, important ones uh, to be to be presented. So the standards were classified in different categories: um, communication, data model, in Internet of Things, format, operation, and quality. All the standards um, are, are presented in here, with, in the, using those those colors to to to, you, to help the, the classification. Communication and format standards are being widely adopted in Z Factor. The standards, application of quality management system, system of software engineering, architecture description, and the simple text-oriented messaging protocol, as well as data quality model are being tracked. Regarding the, the pace chart, all the standards identified are in priority or in action, meaning that the identification of the standards in Z-Factor represent a significant easiness on their application. The communication and format standards are not only easy to implement, but also represent a great benefit on their application in the projects. STOMP, TCP, IP, and RDF represent the standards most relevant in terms of application and benefits expected. These are part of communication and data model categories, relevant for the Z0 defect manufacturing strategy of Z-Factor, a holistic framework applicable both to new and existing manufacturing lines to achieve zero defect productions within the ultimate goal to become a standard solution. Okay, now we will move to the Goodman uh, part of this analysis uh, and we will give the floor to Paulo Letan from uh, IPB. So in terms of Goodman, uh, one of the initial objectives uh, is to uh, push uh, the standardization activities uh, during the execution of the project. Yes. Uh, and for this purpose, we have two important uh, objectives. That is to ensure the compliance of the project developments with these industrial standards that will be identified during the project but also try to exploit these results and knowledge generated using the connections with the standardization bodies. Uh, aiming this uh, idea, it was developed a methodology uh, that comprised five steps. The first one, trying to identify the standardization objectives. Uh, the second one, make a survey about what are the existing standards in the field. Uh, the third is related to make alignments and a kind of compliance of the standards in the developed solutions during the Goodman project. When we uh, are developing, we also identify some analysis about the gaps in the, and limitations of these standards. And this allows to derive some recommendations for future actions and go to the standardization bodies in order to future adoption. Aiming this methodology, we split um, the scope in six areas, areas of actuation of the Goodman project that are multi-agent systems, communication, data model, knowledge representation, data analytics, and smart inspection tools. Each one of these area uh, make uh, a kind of uh, analysis uh, focusing these four topics. First, the context related to the survey. Second one, the user standards related to the standards used during the uh, developed applications. The, fourth, the third one related to what are the limitations and gaps of existing standards. And finally, what are the actions that they propose for the future? So, as a result of this work, we have this uh, list of classified standards. Um, it is not a final 
uh, list, but it already presents some interesting results. The majority are existing standards and generic and not uh, related to ZDN exclusive. But there is also some uh, under development standards that we are uh, working on that and could be candidate for adoption in the future. Translating this list to the radar and pace uh, charts, it is uh, possible to verify in the radar charts that the, all the, the standards that we use are generic standards related ICT measurement uh, domains and not specific for ZDN. We also identify two standards that are under the globe, that is positioned as candidate and track, and um, the majority was adopted. And it is marked uh, in that uh, narrow cycle. In terms of the pace, it is possible uh, to verify that all expected uh, standards that expect to bring uh, high uh, benefits when adopting, uh, and some with high priority and others with action classification. In this priority, it is placed the uh, standards related to intercommunication, uh, for example, OPC way and REST, and also uh, standards related to measurement and uncertainty in terms of the data. The two standards that are classified as consider is the standards that are under development uh, phase. Another important issue is uh, the synergies with uh, the standardization body. And for this purpose, during the Goodman project, we establish uh, efforts uh, in terms of collaboration with IEEE Standards Association uh, to uh, contribute for development of two standards, this IEEE P2660.1 working group related to interconnection of standard agent, software agents and low-level automation functions, and also this IEEE P2805 series for edge computing nodes. We also uh, are uh, working with Automation ML uh, because uh, we develop a data model for industrial information representation based in Automation ML, and we made some extensions, in, and now we are collaborating for the future adoption. Some results from the Goodman project regarding the interconnection of the multi agent systems with uh, these physical quality control stations will be presented in this Standards and Interoperability Plug First uh, event that will be. Uh, included in the IEEE conference EECON 2019 that will occur in October 14-17 in Lisbon and where we have a, a booth to demonstrate and people can uh, plug and play with these uh, results, uh, the physical results of interconnection. Uh, so, thank you very much. Uh, now we move forward to the standardization examples that we selected from different use cases in these uh, projects that are presented here with, um, trying to show um, how the needs really exist for standardization and harmonization and, of course, evolution of the existing standardization, or, uh, or and or uh, we also look for to show the advantages that we found in uh, specific examples that we will show. We will start by um, the Z-Factor uh, uh, case in which um, we have this, um, um, as presented before, we have this division uh, of our pro uh, project into different strategies within. They, of course, all come along together and work uh, synergetically within our platform but we try to categorize the priorities in terms of standardization uh, topics uh, relating with each other. Of course, this is not a, a closed um, diagram. And of course, this is also difficult to separate 
quite uh, as is, but uh, it's a, a tentative to try to to prioritize in each of our um, zero defect uh, manufacturing strategies within the project uh, what is actually key aspect to to deal with because this will uh, ultimately allow us to later on interact uh, more specifically with technical committees and standardization bodies with very much focused attention. Um, regarding a specific use cases and within a use case, we selected uh, some example to show how standards are important and how we kind of need to link uh, the world of the IT developments that we put on top of the shop floor layer at the factory level. Uh, and of course, the factory level itself uh, in terms of um, uh, standardization procedures and equipments and, and whatever the, the industry sector actually needs. So we have a use case uh, regarding microchip development and manufacturing in which we have a critical aspect regarding the positioning of some uh, uh, elements of this uh, microchip board. And particularly, they need to be uh, glued uh, to each other in a very systematic and controllable way. This affects uh, directly the performance of the product at the end. And since we are talking about uh, first class uh, microchips uh, for very critical applications, such as uh, security, such as uh, health, uh, and we cannot uh, afford to have this kind of uh, defects. And therefore, our end user make, made a, a, a big effort in the past uh, decades to become uh, a renowned leader on, on this. Nevertheless, they still identified uh, several things uh, as uh, issues for us to look for, to how to, how to make that factor useful for them. And uh, one example is that we need to guarantee the placement of the glue in specific points of the, of the board. And this has, of course, minimum and maximum thresholds in both positioning quantity and, and speed. And uh, this is quite uh, precisely uh, tuned. Uh, and nevertheless, they have a few environmental aspects uh, regarding the, the local environment in the, in the production room that, is, uh, that actually influences quite a lot the behavior of the glue dispenser itself. So this is quite uh, applicable even to other industries. Uh, and that's why also it is important and relevant to show it here. But okay, we are talking about um, high precision measurement of the deposition of uh, some, some component. In this case, we are talking about glue. We are talking about high precision sensing and uh, monitoring of the final positioning of, of these. And we are also talking about the later tests that are done and conducted in the parts to try to see if some conductive elements are misplaced or um, let's say put apart from each other, reducing the performance on, on, uh, on this uh, physical parameter that is very important. So we have a few examples in this, um, in this, uh, in this slide showing how uh, different aspects uh, are very critical. And how does this relate with our standardization problem or standardization uh, analysis? Well, we have uh, a few um, standards in place in our end user in this uh, specific use case that we are showing. And these are uh, very uh, quality oriented uh, standards that actually uh, they establish several procedures and control procedures to make sure that the volume, such um, parameters as volume, aging, and uh, thermal exposure and humidity and so, are, are quite well controlled within limits. Of course, this um, relates very much directly with our uh, with our need in that factor to have a platform and a language uh, that actually is quite uh, keen to accept this kind of, of procedures and limitations that we find in the shop floor. In, in this sense, we have, um, we have uh, here identified uh, the need for the sensing system and the platform itself to respond 
to these uh, to these uh, very specific standards, not by complying directly with them because they are very much specific of the, um, the industry sector that we are addressing in this case, but in the sense that we need to provide some kinds of procedures on precision, repeatability and, and um, quality assurance, uh, even from the physical sensing system. And of course, then in all the language that we um, that we refer to in the platform. So we need to make this uh, common language to appear and to, to be real. And it, that is actually the, the difficult part because we have IT developers uh, working on top of very physical systems that are very uh, well developed and accurate and so, and we have very specific requirements, but we need to make our IT and what we call the data related uh, standards within Z factor, uh, the communi at communication level, format level, and even um, frequency level uh, to be um, compatible and kind of providing the, the quality level and, the, and all the, um, the related aspects uh, that is compliant with this. So this is to show that within Z factor, we have a multitude of, uh, of examples within each of the three use cases that shows that the compliance between uh, the IT world uh, of our consortium to develop um, these digital IoT platforms on top of the shop floor level uh, needs to actually look to many other kind of standards that our end users have for. So this is more a challenge than a solution, although we uh, provided um, a, a specific solution for this uh, in terms of measurements and in procedures for these measurements on the environmental aspects and uh, reliability analysis of the machinery implied in this glue application, which actually provided uh, a very nice um, uh, upgrade in their own quality at the shop floor level. Just uh, to have a, a notion, uh, it was the implementation of the sensing system that is very well distributed along the, the production line that allowed to identify one of the main um, environmental aspects that was not controlled at all and not uh, addressed in any of these standards that are quite fulfilled by, by, that, by our end user. So uh, finally, I would like to say that Z Factor already helped uh, by um, marrying these two different worlds and different kind of actors within this uh, project uh, to, to, to get one specific solution for one specific uh, drawbacks that typically these microchips have. So it is very important for us to, to know that uh, this synergy occurred and now we are trying to put this on uh, identification of a possible harmonized standard that collects uh, the needs from one side and, and the other. So now we, we move to Goodman again with a specific uh, use case and example. And we will move, um, we will have again Paulo uh, Leitão. Uh, yes, thanks. Uh, um, again, uh, I, I can confirm uh, with uh, our project in Goodman uh, the, the challenges that you that you are having in your in the Zeta Factor uh, project. In fact, uh, also in our uh, project, uh, we had uh, three different uh, end users that are representing uh, that represents. Uh, uh, the, the majority of the manufacturing uh, environment, uh, different each other with the different uh, uh, constraints and uh, standardization for us also was the way to solve uh, the main problem in order to have uh, a simpler, let's say, deployment of our arch architecture in, the, in these three different uh, environments. In particular, uh, we, had the, we have the Electrolux professional environment production line that is, is a very manual uh, semi-automatic assembly line. 
that produce customized produ uh, that, uh, products. This means low volume and uh, a high presence of operator. So standardization and operators and uh, it's not uh, a simple task and also to share data among operator station uh, and system and uh, quality control automatic station uh, is not easy. Uh, in the Volkswagen Auto Europa, we had, uh, as you can imagine, a, a semi-automatic uh, uh, assembly line, also with presence of operators, uh, but it's mass production. Um, in this case, uh, we faced the, 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 the problem for standardization in order to have uh, uh, included in our architecture the integration of legacy systems, equipments already present in the, in the production line and new equipments that the project was bringing in the production line. So the, as you mentioned before, it was mentioned before, the, the problem of data format, data integrity uh, was, the, was one of the main, uh, main issue and still remain an open point. And, and last, the Zannini case, the Zannini use case uh, was a production, a batch production. So how to bring uh, uh, the, the components uh, and the general assumption uh, um, developed for the, the automatic and uh, more uh, production line uh, to the batch production. So through the Goodman uh, project, we uh, solve this, uh, this case also, bringing advantages uh, in utilizing uh, the data sharing uh, among uh, the, the different layers of our architecture, uh, also for batch production. Uh, the, the different uh, end user uh, bring also different uh, uh, impact or expected uh, achievements. Uh, for sure, uh, the main goal was to save the cost of production and the, the defects reduction. This was done through the use uh, uh, through the development of different uh, uh, different uh, system, different components that uh, we have two results, uh, exploitable results in terms of the general concept of the Goodman. So we can uh, apply the general concept to the different uh, um, end user, uh, different uh, customers uh, and different manufacturing environments uh, through the use of this uh, uh, customized uh, um, and also, but also standardized uh, uh, architecture of the Goodman uh, project. Then we have uh, five exploitable results uh, in terms of uh, um, data analytics and knowledge uh, management. Three exploitable results in terms of uh, rule server, uh, data uh, multi-agent system, uh, and uh, different, uh, different smart inspection tool, uh, two that are very innovative and have been already um, patented. And, and now we, uh, the, the University uh, Università Politecnica delle Marche is uh, going on to, uh, with the industrialization of these two uh, smart inspection tools. On top of this, as I said before, was a big effort to standardize in order to make data available at three different layers. So the use of, uh, as uh, Paolo Letao was described before, automation ML, REST, and uh, to uh, unification standardization of the database structure was very helpful because, uh, as you can imagine, the efforts that we devoted to the deployment of the, uh, this architecture in the three different, very different use cases was uh, really um, minimized using uh, this uh, standardized approach. And uh, as uh, uh, we can see, uh, the integration is done, the results have been uh, achieved, but uh, we are not at the end of, of the story. We, we, we are just, uh, I think, at the beginning. And for sure, we had a very important lesson learned in transforming the, the factory, the, the multi-stage production lines that we had in our project in order to become a zero defect manufacturing production line. Because in the reality, as I was describing before, we had uh, highly technical production lines, but we had in our project also uh, production line coming from industry 2.0, not uh, uh, let's say uh, 
um, really update uh, with the last technologies. So the F in this case, also in, 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 our, uh, in our approach to the production line, we had also some difficulties uh, in terms, as I said, of standardization of data, but also because when from the laboratory we move uh, to the production line, uh, other uh, new pro uh, problems occur. In particular, uh, the environmental noise affecting measurements because data are coming from, from the sensor, from the shop floor. So at the, at the bottom layer, we had problem interfacing uh, and uh, integrating the, the existing equipments because also for the old equipments, uh, we have to find uh, a common standard, a common way to interface and to, and to collect data from these uh, equipments. The, as I said, coming from the laboratory in a very nice environment, uh, measurement data are very clean. In the shop floor, uh, the situation is uh, different. It's a very noisy uh, environment uh, and the operators uh, is part of the loop. Uh, coming back to the problem of the IT, in fact, uh, a main issue in this uh, standardization proce uh, pro process of these technologies uh, we had to face with the stability of network infrastructure and uh, in order to allow a, um, a flow of data that is uh, real-time and uh, always stable. Uh, if we are going up at the middle layer, uh, again, now is uh, the, the place where the IT infrastructure is very important. So we have to put uh, to interact with the legacy system already um, in, the, in the production. Uh, the, 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 the IT infrastructure has to be stable, but also we face an important problem uh, also to have the uh, knowledge and the acceptance of this new technology that, is, uh, that now are necessary in order to approach this new DDM strategy. So the industrial acceptance, the IT group uh, um, uh, um, integration in, in, this, uh, in these technologies is very, is very important. Because this is, as I said, the first step. The next step will be an autonomous behavior. And if we want an autonomous behavior in this, uh, in this exchange of information and knowledge, we need to have a full acceptance of, this, uh, of these technologies. At the top layer, the top uh, layer uh, that is the data, knowledge, data and knowledge management, for sure, right now, still we need a domain expert collaborations. So still the human, the manager, the domain expert is in the loop and is taking the most important decision. Um, because it's very important in this layer to have, as I said before, data integrity and format. Uh, the data are not, uh, they still need a lot of efforts in order to be clean and to be prepared for the an automatic data analytics. We have to have a design-driven knowledge management. It cannot be that uh, the, the, data the data and knowledge management is uh, uh, driven by the, the, the shop floor and also uh, the adaptive knowledge representation format. Again, so as, as you can understand, data, uh, uh, data format, data standardization, and the way to communicate from the shop floor to the higher level is the main focus, remains the same, the, the import, an important focus and will be the, the challenge also in the next future. Thank you, Christina, for this uh, nice vision. Uh, now we move forward to the stream uh, Zero D um, video, uh, presenting their own uh, example. Stream Zero D is based on the integration in production lines of physics-based simulation models able to run in real time. The models are fed with input parameters captured upstream, stream, and based on the model prediction, some of the downstream process parameters are adjusted to fine-tune some of the product KPIs to the exact target values. 
in the case of Stream 0D, we do not have a work package or task specifically devoted to standardization. This is a difficult subject to approach, as the first and fundamental step is the development of physics-based simulation models that are able to predict some of the key parameters of the product as a function of several critical input parameters related to both the product and the process. Therefore, these simulation models are specific for the product and process being addressed. Even for different references or variations of the same product, we need to modify the simulation model accordingly. Of course, the phase that needs more time and effort is the development of the initial model. Once we have a model for a given product, the customization of the model for different references takes much less effort. Actually, the standardization of the simulation model development phase makes no sense, except for maybe the use of numerical tools, although each application might require different approaches to get optimized results. Afterwards, a real-time model must be developed. To generate these real-time models, we apply model order reduction techniques. This part has been somehow standardized through the development of a library that we have called Twinkle, which is able to generate the real-time models from sets of data coming from the simulation models. Twinkle generates digital twins, which can reproduce material and product manufacturing processes in real time. The library has been designed to accommodate future extensions and is flexible enough to satisfy different needs from the industrial users with regards to the generation of digital twins. Standardization activities could apply to other stages of the project, such as the integration of the models in the production line and their connection to the sensors, which will provide the values of the input parameters of the model, as well as the connection to the systems that will receive the values of the process parameters used to adjust the process. These sensors and control systems might already exist in the line, or they might have to be developed and installed if they are not already present. In any case, this handling of data to and from the model and the integration of the model itself could be subject to standardization needs. Regarding these standardization needs and opportunities, specifically on the field of model-based systems engineering, we have thought that the best way to approach this subject is by asking our end users, who are the ones that can shed light on this matter in a better way. First, let's see the opinion of one of the end users of Stream 0D, a standard profile. SP is a multinational company dedicated to the production of seals for card doors and windows made by extrusion of rubber. This is a very complex process in which several physical phenomena take place, from the moment the rubber is extruded through a die and goes through different ovens to be cured. Despite this complexity, we have managed to develop a model which is able to predict, in real time, the geometry and curing state of the rubber profile as it progresses through the line. According to SP, the deployment of a solution such as the one we are proposing in Stream 0D needs a minimum infrastructure to perform the capture and subsequent processing of the data. Without this infrastructure, the deployment is different in each case and, of course, more complex. The solution could be the use of a standard platform for data capture and subsequent processing. In this line, one option could be the use of a standard platform such as Fiveware that can make solutions like Stream 0D or other solutions developed in the zero defect manufacturing platform easily integrated. Fiveware is a platform developed within an FP7 project, which is open source and puts the basis for the development of integrated solutions. Basically, this platform involves the creation of a structure of data from different sources, which can be distributed in multiple environments and levels, but which are centralized in databases in a local CPD or in the cloud for further processing. It has protocols for plant equipment communication and facilitates the implementation of data analysis and manipulation tools. Another use case of Stream 0D is FERSA, a producer of roller tapered bearings. These bearings are manufactured by machining and assembling the different parts of the bearing. These pieces must be machined with an accuracy of microns. A model that is able to predict the dimensions of the bearing as a function of the working temperature allows detecting parts that are approved by the online quality control system but that should be rejected, false positives, or parts that are rejected but should be approved, false negatives. 
additional data-driven models will allow FERSA to compensate the grinding process deviation automatically in real time based on the observed trends. When asked about standardization needs, FERSA respond that they have not used to refer to any standards. For the communication of the models with the machines, they have used the capabilities of the different equipment already installed in the factory, but they do not have any standards to rely upon. In summary, the availability of model and data management standards would facilitate a lot the work of the different agents involved in the process. In any case, we still have a lot of work ahead to standardize the way industry uses simulation models in their production lines focused on zero defect manufacturing. So thank you. Um, this was uh, the, the last presentation we have in our agenda. We now move to the last point of the agenda, which is the wrap up and closure. And as we have just a few remarks uh, that we would like to stress out in this part, in fact, we, we, we have been find, uh, finding all together uh, these five projects that, of course, there is a need for standardization uh, discussion at the level of um, zero defect manufacturing approaches. Uh, this is in integrative uh, in a sense that, um, again, um, we need uh, to combine different worlds uh, when we talk about uh, working on top of data that comes from the shop floor. And so we need to combine uh, industrial procedures that are already in place and that, that relate to the quality inspection and, and procedures and insurance uh, to the, the IT level uh, of communication and um, treatment of this data into useful tools, such as each of the tools that are developed in each of these five projects uh, to actually provide solutions and add value to these um, shop floor uh, level activities. So this is something that we are struggling to actually harmonize and have a common vision uh, that's the main goal of this group. We will keep providing um, recommendations and guidelines for future actions and uh, expectedly in future projects, uh, these standardization aspects will be included from the very first uh, moment as a relevant aspect to make sure that we kind of develop a, a, a future uh, common group of standards that actually is good for a uh, for all of, of these players and especially for the European uh, markets uh, represented. Um, we would like to stress out that um, the focus group intention is to make uh, these projects to come along together. And we are now absolutely uh, clear about the relevance of making these discussions at this group level. So. Uh, we would like to, to say that it is obvious now for all of us and hopefully for also you that are attending this webinar that um, we are stronger together uh, than separately and this is quite obviously uh, observed in our, in our standardization initiatives uh, within each of our projects. So we alone cannot do the, the, the changes that uh, we kind of identify and need. And so we need this uh, higher level discussion uh, room. Uh, we also find that the opportunity of this group is uh, timely in a sense that we are approaching the end of uh, these, these projects. And so we are capitalizing from a, a strong and vast experience that was in fact uh, gathered by each of the consortium. I, I, I don't know if uh, any of the presenters want to, to say something. We would give you the floor uh, for some moments. So please. I would like to, to highlight uh, that is based on our Goodman experience. Uh, we feel that uh, standardization is not an uh, easy task to implement it and requires a strong involvement and commitment of everyone. 
and it also requires a long journey as it was also noticed here uh, during the presentations but uh, standardization is is mandatory so it is crucial for the industrial adoption of the blueprint technological solutions and it is particularly important under the scope and the advent of this industry 4.0 uh, initiative and era so this is a, a very important highlight to that we have looked to to make Thank you. Um, so we guess that this is uh, quite an opportune discussion and of course we are delighted to have your participation uh, very active uh, in this stage of, uh, of the group. So we would like, uh, me and Marco would very much like to, to thank uh, more especially to Cristina uh, Paulo and Jose that actually represent these other projects uh, together with our uh, ourselves and um, we we would like to reinforce the the idea that this is uh, as Christina mentioned uh, is this is an open process of course we kind of uh, didn't fin finalize anything we are actually starting uh, this discussion this discussion and our experiences in our projects actually show that we can actually do something about this uh, for the benefit of uh, industry and society in the future. Uh, we would like to finalize this by um, uh, by re recalling you that we will have this workshop and I think my colleague Mark will uh, present it uh, and some details of, about it. So this workshop that will be will be held in uh, in Bergamo, it's an um, industrial workshop of Z Factor, uh, which will have uh, a presentation of the of the use cases, and also a specific um, session uh, regarding standardization. Um, yeah, standardization is is led by by Nova. We will we will share the the results uh, of our research and our our efforts um, towards uh, standardization um, we will present the, um, the standards and the evaluation that that, uh, that we that we did and and also um, we will um, we will create awareness on this uh, standardization topic um, clearly stating um, what are the important issues that standardization can can answer um, the, the 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 difficulty uh, into applying uh, these uh, these standards, um, which are which can be in more general aspects uh, or in more critical and specific aspects as as were as were presented before in the in the use cases and also in the radar in the base chart. Um, and uh, the importance of uh, mainly on the importance of the standardization to reduce or even eliminate the defects in manufacturing. So we warmly invite you to participate uh, to follow this uh, agenda. Uh, it will be the, um, the final event uh, for the standardization aspects in our uh, in our Z Factor project but also we uh, will try to combine, compile and collect uh, the visions from different projects within this session. Therefore, it will be a kind of a cluster, um, harmonized vision on what to do next. Um, so thank you all. It, on, on behalf of, um, of the Z Factor Consortium, both me and, uh, and Marco would like to thank you all for, for attending this um, webinar. This is part of uh, a calendar of a group of initiatives that we will still uh, follow in the remaining um, months of our Z Factor project. We would like, of course, to specially thank um, the very active participation of uh, the other four projects that we invited for this group. And we hope that um, these synergies will uh, keep up in the future to feed uh, this discussion that will move towards some uh, actual standardization um, activity in the future involving the proper technical committees and uh, standardization bodies. So 
thank you all uh, once more and um, hope to to have feedback from you soon and to see a progress in this matter in the next few months bye bye thank you